Don't you know that the music should be soft? Are you ready? Happy Wednesday. What are you wearing? How you doing? We didn't um, plan this. I, we didn't plan I, this. I, listen, I swear to God, people, I did not call my boy Theo Rossi and go, are you wearing green? Are you wearing green? I want to wear green. Are you wearing green? Look at us. Money green. <laughs> <laughs> We're not even talking about the third season, that Irish season at all. We're so back in season the, two, Theo. That's the interesting thing. We should have wore these last week. We don't think of that ahead of time. It's anarchy. It's anarchy. <laughs> Reaper so, reviews time, people. So before we get into oh. what this episode is, which is, by the way, we've done, have we done a finale or a premiere yet? We did. We did the pilot. We did the pilot of season one. And we've already, uh, I think we're talking about. But season... we did the finale of season three. No. Correct. No. Well, I, I think coming up. Coming, coming up. up. Oh, it's yeah. coming up. It's coming up. Okay. But we have not done any other. Today is another premiere. Today is another premiere. That's right. Season two premiere. Right now, right here. Episode one. Correct. How do you say the word? I'm not even going to try. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to try. I screwed up small tears so bad with my tiny tears. I'm not going to do it. You do it. Albification. Albification. That's Which means? This. No idea. I kind of found out. I cheated. I looked it up. It means to, um, hold on. I already forgot. It means to. It's amazing what this thing means for this show. It really does because of what it is. The exact definition is the act or process of making white. And look what, look what we're about to go into. Look what we're going into. Season two, episode one. I mean, wow, Kurt Sutter, you, uh, your titles mean something, don't they? This is uh, a very, a very uh, large episode, I think, yes. of the whole journey of this show. It's so significant. But before we get into it, on the last show, we started off, well, one of the last shows, we started a couple back. We started, I don't know what we're doing anymore. We started off with read the comments. Yeah. I have to talk about this for a minute. Please. Ever since we let everyone know that, it's been amazing. Everyone's been amazing in the comments. It really has. Off, off the charts. My Twitter's off the charts. I off can't the charts. It. Off the chain. Off everything. But so here's glad a, you guys are going off the top. So glad you're not going in order. I can't tell you. So off happy. Top. But here's, I have to say something. There was one person yeah. who wrote, I, I have to bring this up. There's always one, Theo. There's, there's always, always one. And it's one. truly amazing. And I just get a kick out of it. The person wrote, here's what you should do. You should change the format of the show. You should do an episode where all you do is you talk about all your favorite motorcycles and the ones you have ridden in your life. Okay. Um, no, first of all, because it would be the most boring show ever. Okay. <laughs> it would last 15 minutes. And it would no, be- No, seven, seven and a half minutes, actually. And, and who- Maximum. Who wants to watch that? No one. Uh, not, not me. Not, not me. me. I mean, Theo, I, I spend my entire, you know, uh, life now uh, having guys and girls come up to me and they, they love the show. They, they love me. And I'm so grateful and thankful. And the biggest mistake they ever make is, can I show you my bike? Can I show you my bike? And they pull out this picture of a motorcycle. And I, I think it's, it. I love their enthusiasm, but I've, I've seen a million bikes. Okay. okay wait, wait. <laughs> so that same guy comes back a few comments later guy i'm sorry it's the person comes back i don't know who it is because i can't tell they all have these code names and he and he and the person says also do me a favor while you're at it can you stop calling people by their real names and just call them by their character names because i'm having to stop the show and go look up the people i'm sorry bud anything else you need Want me to a warm cup of tea at night? Want me to tuck in? <laughs> Anything else? What else can I do for you? 
<laughs> yeah, no, really. I mean, let's let's find out who that guy is. I'll send him some flowers. I'll send him a T-shirt. I might even sign the back because we can't. And, what and, other and work may, does he want me to do? <laughs> and, I, and may I just say, I I think we're done a pretty good job <laughs> of saying Charlie Hunnam Jacks. Thank you. I think we go Katie Segal Gemma. Um, and some of these incredible guest stars that we've had on the show, it's nice to it's nice to throw their real names out and, there before and, we go. And, Marcus and guess or, right. And guess what? Maybe you got to hit the Googs for a minute. Maybe you got to Google it. Maybe you have to just do one second of work for knowledge. Put your joint away. Put your drink down. Open your phone. Press pause because you don't want to miss anything. And learn something. Don't miss and and find something out. <laughs> go for it. Who cares? <laughs> so, I love it. I love so it. this will be, I will be checking. I, I uh, kind of enjoy <laughs> this. <laughs> I kind of enjoy it. The one we thing I got to tell you, what's in it? Uh, really, uh, it's becoming a bit of a trend now on these comments is how young you and I look. Well, I just noticing the color of your shirt there and the color of my shirt and the color of my Gorgeous painting behind a lot of a lot of blues and greens going on. Yeah, I didn't do that on purpose. I know I'm a I'm a black dark blue guy, but yeah, this green too. might be my new color, Theo. I know it works. A lot of people yellow. People say yellow is my color, so I don't know why they do. I'm not sure about that, <laughs> but I would like to see you in yellow next week or the week after, just I, so I can. I don't know check. if I have one here in. Ca oh, oh, here's another comment someone said. <laughs> here's one. I, I have to bring it up. Someone Please. said, um. <clears throat> hey, I know you were on TV and stuff. Maybe you can afford a better place that doesn't look like you're in some low budget hotel room. I am. <laughs> That's where you are. I am in a hotel room. And it's not even a low budget. It's, it's actually beautiful. On the, it's on a, on a higher scale up there. In it's got nice rooms. Canada. Multiple rooms. Up in Canada. In Canada. Oh, fuck. I, he's I telling me it. where to live now. Somebody's telling yeah. me where to live. Yeah, yeah. You just, you, you know, <laughs> I can't tell you how to succeed, but I can tell you how to fail by trying to please everyone. Greatest okay? Kim, Kim, Kim Coates quote ever. <laughs> it's a, and it's the truest thing. In the, everyone should have that tattooed somewhere in my, their house. My, my Twitter feed, because you know I, I'm not like you. You're way better at all this than I am. You've got Instagram. You've got the whole thing going on. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're Theo Rossi, with, you know, <laughs> theory pod. I mean, you're, you're, you're exploding. I'm just riding on your coattails, but I got to tell you, if I get one more positive comment on how good that painting looks in my little studio up here in town, it looks, it. you got to sell it. I might start selling it. Post <laughs> prints. Sell prints. <laughs> you, you in the middle of it. <laughs> yeah, I could go like that and put the person there. I could make a fortune for my charity, Steel. A fortune. If we ever do Comic Cons again, you can set, you could have that there to sign. <laughs> <laughs> no, I swear I'm going to. I'm gonna. Oh, Question, good. is that Lake Louise? No. No, it's Castle Mountain, just mm -hmm. outside of Banff in Alberta. It's uh, an incredible... Uh, this is the British... most you're ever showing of it. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I try and change it up a little bit. Um, God, I, I got to get a microphone, Theo. Oh, I got to get Banner. a microphone. Eric Banner I, told Eric, you. Eric Banner, our, our boy Eric, for all of those of you out there who know Eric Banner, movie star, Australian. The best. We did Black Hawk Down together. He's the best buddies <laughs> yeah. ever since. And you and yeah. him hang up more than me and him do. He's now. the greatest. What did greatest he say to you? Of, what did he say? Yeah, no, he just literally said, you know, Coatsy, step it up a little. Get get a microphone like Theo Scott. So you guys, yeah. he said, you guys sound pretty good. Sounds pretty good. But, you know, it just would be nice if the exact sync of his little iPod that he listens to, he hasn't missed one of these, by the way. And, so uh, that, so that's that's we, we've addressed that and we're working on it. We've talked about potentially down the road, uh, you know, who knows where we'll both be in, in the future. You know, maybe there will be, maybe there will be. But right now, like we said, deal with it because, and, uh, and, and, but, and, but a and, microphone would be nice for you. I'm, I'm on that. I'm getting on that. But isn't Amazon. it nice to know all our fans out there and how no matter where we are, we're doing one of these a week. We're doing one we of these are. a week. We're not, we're not disappointing. And then we drop our little clips on Mondays and Fridays or whenever those come. I don't even know. I, I definitely Mondays. Um, yeah. But, uh, 
but in which they're just, you know, absolutely hysterical. And, uh, and, and Justin, shout out Justin Tordella, who does an amazing job. And by the way, speaking of, we never do that. Cesar Arvello is, uh, does all the graphics, which are so incredible, makes you look so much better. So much than better than I really am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Justin, you know, does all the stuff, has, you know, does all our stuff. And then Carolyn Kawash, who, who, who edits all our episodes. And I mean, uh, you know, just shout out to the team. So here we are, bud. Um, we're in season two, episode one, the one yeah. that you talked about multiple times. And I have said, we believe this is the turning point for our show, which ultimately became the turning point for our lives. And I'm just going to go first and tell people why I believe that. Season go one, people watched the show. They did. But not, it was definitely and for sure not the show that we all know and love right now. Season two premiered. And we're going to get to the ending of the episode of what occurred. And it was one of those moments, there's water cooler moments in TV shows, and then there's ones that just break the whole office. This was something because of Katie Seagal and Married with Children and her incredible career coming in and playing this really different role that with the ending of this episode, which we all know, we wouldn't be watching this review thing if we didn't know the end, um, changed everything for us. It literally changed everything. So this episode is so important because all of a sudden our ratings like tripled and people started watching like crazy. And we just became a different show after this show. Agree. Agree. And, and you, you have to remember that this, this show that we're talking about now that Theo's talking about, if you can imagine, we filmed it in late May, early June. Then we do the second show, the third, buh, buh, buh. By the time this premiered in September of 2009, when it premiered and we all went to the premiere, we all went to the premieres every year. We went to this premiere. We, we hadn't seen anything put together. Yeah. You don't see anything put together. You do some looping, you do some ADR. But I'll never, ever forget this premiere because to see what you and everyone, Katie, Charlie, the team did in this episode to see it all put together with the music and the whole thing. And the ending was so uh, mind blowing mm -hmm. and jaw dropping. You're right. That's when I knew we were on a hit show. This is get ready. Yeah, there were two moments I said when this happened and then back in the day what people if you know some people remember is pre 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 the way Netflix is now Netflix used to put their old sh like put other people's oh, shows on yeah, which they still yeah. do but they used yeah. to do it they didn't have any originals and when when our season 4 premiered our first three seasons were on Netflix already. Oh, and that, wow. and that changed. Did not know that. I yes. forgot that. So the Bullshit. two moments, yeah, the two moments are this moment. And then when our show became available on Netflix, they had the first three seasons on and everybody was watching it because everybody had Netflix. But what's so, what's so amazing about this is, and I got to tell you, we say it every episode. I don't, you know me, I don't fucking care that we say the same things all the time. I am so into this show right now, by the way, I'm like so into it. And I don't watch a lot of television. I'm trying up here while I'm filming to watch some things here and there. And, uh, you know, a lot of things I'll put on like one or two episodes and go, I, it's just not, this ain't going to happen. Like, I don't believe anybody in this show. And I don't mean that in a mean way. I just, it's just not going to work. Right. And not for me. We're not, we're not meant for each other. It, there's something about this show that I am like locked in when I'm watching I mean, selfishly, thank you for making me watch this show, Theo. <laughs> no. no, thank you. Selfishly, for me, I'm going to bed a lot happier now. I'm actually going to bed knowing that, well, wait a minute, back in those seven years, I've seen half the shows, or we just, we discussed yeah. that we had little lack ones of time, here and there. Yeah. little ones here and there. But, but to really see it and, and take watch notes. it and take notes about it, 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 it really is, uh, it's coming full circle, baby. And this is getting better and better every week. So 
And the fact that we're like, re- like now that we know what titles mean and like, you know, we're, we're, kind we're analyzing, kind well, kind of, yeah, we're, we're like one for we gotta five. We got to look it up. <laughs> one for six. But, I, you know, I thought NS was not smoking for a second. I, you I mean, you, you know, went on a whole thing about you know, that, uh, you know. which we'll, which we'll see. Um, but here, here's my thing. Uh, uh, I have such a, a admiration for it. And now it, this sounds so weird that I think about this. We, you and I have been together in everywhere in the world, from Australia to, to Middle Every, East, Europe, to every, everywhere, everywhere in the Middle world. East, yeah. we, we've not been anywhere because of this show, right? Yeah. We've seen this, and it listen, it's happened to me today. We've seen it. There's, there's such an incredible enthusiasm, like it, like it lifts people out of their shoes, I've said, right? Because we were doing it, but haven't watched it really at all, except for a few here and there, I didn't understand it, by the way. I fully understand it. Like, like the, the running through the airport and knocking people down to, to say hello because you're so invested. I get it. Now I get it because it's kind of how I feel when I'm watching it. I'm like, wow, I get. So in this episode in particular, you know, we're starting with, here it is. It opens up with one of the funniest things that's ever happened to us and not funny. And when I mean funny, I mean not funny at all, but funny for you, me. You, 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 you want to start? Let me finish. Do you want to go? Want I just want to set the scene. I just want to set, set the scene. Set it up. Season two, episode one opens with all the boys firing MAC-10s that we're trying out from uh, the Irish Gun Connect. We're all firing these guns. Everybody's joking. About six of us. About six, about six of us in the line. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and Hassack was kind of putting up the targets and all that. We were excited. It's our first episode back. We were off six months. Everybody's, you know, moving and grooving as they're going. And, uh, and I, uh, after half sack runs when we're done shooting half sack goes and he said hey just you know improv like a shot or two i think a few people you take the character i believe was shooting at half sack keep well, going all, you're doing you're doing well we keep all going. wanted to get in on the mix because that's what we do there we try to one-up each other well um one thing you're not supposed to improv with boys and girls <laughs> is uh guns <laughs> So when you use ammunition that are uh, uh, blanks, they are still real bullets. They do still make the same noise. And one thing you're going to learn about Kim Coates as we go on this journey, Kim's got sensitive ears, guys. (laughs) He's got really sensitive ears. So I'll let you take it from there. I'll take it from there. First day, just like you said, we're so excited. How's your arms? Did you work out? How you how you looking? I like your hair. Did you do a show before this? Like yeah. Kim, why is why is your hair not longer? Like it was all kibitzing, boom, boom, boom. And of course, we'd seen each other before we started filming quite a bit during those five or six months off. But this was day one. Here we go. And we had a brand new gun wrangler. They're called wranglers. They come in. They're with props, but they know ammunition, they know blanks, they know guns better than anybody. Mm -hmm. Trust me, we had a million of them on Black Hawk Down. They just know armory. They know guns. It's their specialty. It's their specialty. And this was a new guy. We'd never seen him before. And like the MAC-10s, the handguns, the semi-machine, they were all set out. All set out. Now, you know this, people. Peeps are beauties. You need earplugs. Everybody has to have earplugs. And when you shoot a scene that requires gunnery and firing you can't have a lot of dialogue because you need to hear people when you do dialogue so you should always have earplugs in just for the firing and then when you do the dialogue you don't really fire you just don't really fire because there's dialogue well this one particular close to after this new wrangler poor guy was he was he 105 years old theo i'm not i think he was he looked like the crypt keeper he was I mean, he was in trouble he, you know, he, he looked like the guy from Macbeth, the guy who. Yeah. Uh, His first movie was the original please. Westerns. <laughs> no, really with John Wayne. And yeah. anyway, so he was trying the best he could, but I had a line. So the, the, the plugs came out, there was going to be just fake shootery, just fake. And I had a line to half sack, like, put it up, put the sign up, put it on the puh. Right there. Who did it? My, my BFF right there in the green. He, he fired that freaking gun so loud right in my, I mean, not right in my ear, but pretty close. You know, you, pretty close. Pretty close. 
Well, I did not get the, the nickname safety first for nothing, peeps, because, whoa, that was it. I think you I were angry and it was the first of many injuries to come for Kim Tig Coates on the set of Sons of Anarchy. The eardrums were one of the first things to go. Yeah. They never yeah, recovered. We, and then some many other things, which we will get into. We'll get into. You just found it. yourself at the center of these very odd things that would occur to you. And I just, I don't ever want to defend myself because what I did was the problem was we were walking away and they said, oh, fire back. Yeah, yeah. And we were walking away. So you had to turn and fire the MAC-10. And I didn't realize that you were there. More importantly, I didn't realize you didn't have your earplugs on. And uh, and that was the, that's how we started. Now, also, that's how the episode started. So there is a song playing called Slip Kid, which is a, you know, complete rock a uh, huge rock song that you know is on that son's album that i've heard seven gazillion times um this is back when the tension was hot and heavy with clay and jacks we were here yeah. we've talked about this multiple times right yeah so now we're going through everybody the tension's hot and heavy with clay and jacks and we get to bobby in prison which yeah. again, I always forget about. We've talked about it now. Talked about that, yeah. Yeah, he comes out. He's got the ponytail. He's looking like ready to roll. He's got the one the one piece suit on, which is just so flattering on his body. And he comes out, and he's he loved it. <laughs> he was on Bobby Island in prison. He finally gets out. Go ahead, or he's about but, to get out. Yeah, but you know what? The one thing that I have to say about Boone, which is so, there are certain people. I've always said this that are so. They don't have to do anything when the camera's on. They just have to speak because them as a person is so incredibly unique, like uh, actors. We've talked about this on the show, the Anthony yeah. Hopkins of the world, the Morgan Freemans, you know, the people yeah. we talk about who literally can just speak, right? He's one of those guys that his look and his voice and his cadence is just interesting. So there's a thing that, you know, Bob De Niro said a long time ago, Robert De Niro said, uh, they were asking him like, what's your advice on acting? He said, don't act. Yeah. Don't do, right. Just don't yeah. do anything. Yeah. Boone is really the epitome of that. Like he, he could just speak and it's super interesting. Just his, the way he looks, the way he's, I couldn't agree right? more. Right. Yeah. No, Bo Bo Booney has a, a, a beautiful soul to Bobby Elvis. He, he really is the, the doc of the seven dwarfs of all of us. He really yeah. is like that doc character who's trying to piece it all together and, help, help Charlie out, help, help, you know, Perlman out, uh, you know, do, or, or help Jackson clay mm -hmm. out as we yeah. talked earlier, but yeah, Booney does it really well. He, he's, but he's just in life, dog. like, you know, you and I yeah. have spent so much time with Boone all over the world and we've, we've had so many meals together. He's, I, I've always wondered this because I've met actors that are, have zero personality, but they're great yeah. actors, like zero, yeah. less than yeah. zero personality, but they're great actors. And then I've met people who just have this incredible, magnanimous personality, and they're also great actors, right? And, you know, and, and again, I've met people with great personalities who can't act, you know, wet in a shower. And then there's, you know, so it kind of goes both ways. But with Boone, it's just being around him, and I've had these conversations with him about the strangest things because he's so interesting. Yeah. And I think it really comes off. That character was just so perfect for him. So... Now we get to the it really Hales. was. We get the yeah. Hales, starting with Jacob Hale. This is our first introduction to what will come to be known as the League of American Nationalists. That's what they are. And it's Zoe Bell and my man, which we've talked about before, Henry Rollins. Henry Rollins. That's and a Jeff, well character. That, and, J and Jeff. Jeff, Jeff plays Jacob there. Hale. And then, and then, yeah, exactly. He's there, and then, and then uh, Taylor comes in later. You ever shoot in that diner? Have you shot in the diner? I did. I did. Yeah. Me too. How yeah. many scenes have it, you had? A bunch there. Uh, I don't know, but every time I see it, I go. I've been in there a few times. Yeah, I was in. I was in there a couple of times for sure. Yeah, I had yeah. a big scene later down and uh, later in like seven season with Chibs when he kind of turned his back on me. So I always remember that diner. I mean, is he? Is isn't really? that diner from Pulp Fiction or not really? Or do you know the one from Pulp Fiction? I think is on Wilshire. That one was somewhere in the valley oh, no, by that's right. us. That was no, that's this right. one, but this one has been used 
forever. I also know we for a lot it. of movies. Yeah, yeah, for a lot. So here's our introduction to these dudes. Yeah. And these are our, you know, antagonists. Here they are. These are the guys. This is the people that are going to give, make the son's life hell. And, and a lot of things are going to come with it. It's funny what he does on this show. The oh. enemy, the, Kurt, like the way Kurt. the the enemies don't look like enemies in a way, like right away, right? Like Darby was an enemy and looked like an enemy. He had the whole thing of an enemy, but these guys are coming in like the suits, the whole thing, right? The whole, and they got Jacob Hale already, you know, with them because they're these businessmen. And then Hale comes in. I thought it was such a great introduction because we know right away that they're, you know, for lack of better words, pieces of shit because they're these white separatists or whatever they are. But he packaged it in something that made them look very professional. You I loved I mean? it. I love the writing because it's frightening. I have, I have written down it's, it's frightening because Kurt Sutter, again, is kind of ahead of his time with some of these issues that the world has, not just America, the world has. And the writing in that scene, when, when Hale comes in to sit with his older brother and these two new guys, business suits, well, you know, Rollins', is, Rollins mm -hmm. is, is his costume was just so perfect for that, for who he was and what that character believed in. Mm -hmm. and, and Adam Arkin is just this business guy. But what came out of their mouths and what Hale said was what the audience is thinking. Like the audience got to live through Hale in that scene because Hale's going, wait a minute, you're who? Wait, and he gets handed a card. Oh, oh, you're, you're white su su supremacist. He goes, no, no, we're, we're separatists. Mm. We're not, we're separate. Like just the words coming out. So right away, first time we're seeing these guys, what the fuck is, why are they there? No one knows yet, but. And he does what something a great. And he does something great with bad guys. And you're so right. Hale was so good in that scene. Taylor. So for good. The guy, for the guy who doesn't want to know people's names. Look it His up. Real name's Taylor. And he plays Hale Jr. Look Hale it Jr. Up. Let me, let me confirm for you. <laughs> Um, but here, here's, here's the thing that is so interesting in that scene, enemies, bad guys, uh, antagonists, whatever you want to call them in a story are always the heroes of their own story. What they feel they're doing is right, even though they're bad guys. And when Hale says, I know who you are. And he says yeah. the supremacist line, they come back with separatists. Cause that's their way of saying like, wait a second, we're not this, we're that, we're you that. know, and, yeah. and, and, and they try to like almost make themselves to be the good guys. So right from there, we meet these guys, Clay comes riding in with the group, by the way, I just want to give a shout and, out. And can, we, on the just give a sh can we shout, give a shout out for that? And may I say that Tommy, who is constantly, early in season one, two, and three. For me, my nickname being safety first, <laughs> Tommy was always a bit of a nutcase. He, he just, he swerved, he was fast, he just blah, blah, blah. No hands. And in, this, <clears throat> and in yeah, thank you. And in yeah. this scene right here, we see Tommy hanging that right arm down, just yep. hanging it down for the camera, because you know the camera's right on him as he rode by. I'm just gonna show everybody I can ride with one hand. One hand, one hand on the wheel, and, went, and he okay. was, and he was still getting right. relative. He ride, he's a hell of a rider now, but he was still getting hell of a rider now, relatively comfortable at that moment. To Whoa! Me. But the coolness was more important to him. So here, and and again, I saw you know Clay's riding up front. I think they were going like seven miles an hour when I saw the scene, but it worked. we were we were we were we were having fun back then, man. Yeah. Anyone ride, listen, anyone who rides bikes, right? The the hardest thing or certainly learning early on a bike is to go slow. How yeah. do you go slow? How do you park the bike? How do you back it up? How do you pull away slow? Once you go in 30 miles an hour, it's easy. you can be on a horse, you can be in a Porsche, you can be, <clears throat> it's pretty easy, but that slow stuff. That bike gets heavy when you go slow. You yeah, start to that, feel the weight of it. That yeah, I didn't, that, I never, that was the hardest thing for me to get when I was riding was, you know, stopping parking, you know, the whole bit. It was, it was. Stand down and up. Yeah. It's, yeah. Oh. And especially when you're doing it in a scene and they're timing you because you get your kickstand down, you didn't turn your bike off, your helmet's still on, it's a mess. We've talked oh, about we've all talked those about things that. you got to do. So, okay, another cool little fun fact, the opening credits roll and the first season I was a guest star. So that's was where I'm not, in the main not credits. Not no more. Not, not no, no more. Mo. I'm in the main credits. What's up? Well, yeah, I, uh, yeah that, that's exactly right. Um, One of the greatest yeah. moments of my life. I was so excited. 
Uh, I was so excited. Like I wasn't a regular, I didn't know. Everybody knows this story. I've told it a thousand times, but when I I auditioned for every role in the show and you know, when Kurt and I had talked, he's like, I don't know if you're going to be in one episode or all of them. I don't know anything. Yeah. yeah. So every week I was like, Oh, I'm going to, the character's going to get killed or he's just going to disappear or it's not really a big deal. So when I got made a regular, when they made me into a regular, I was like, Oh wow. They're like committing to me to being on the show. And I was so excited because it was just like, it was already a train that was moving. And here I am, I got like, for, in, in, in our industry, I got job stability for a moment, which you don't get in this industry. I got job stability, you know, which we can talk about right about season three when we knew this thing was going to go all seven. We all had job stability, but we didn't because we didn't know if we'd be gone the next episode. So we never really had job stability in this whole thing. But that was an amazing moment, I thought. Um, for me in my life, I just want to say. And William uh, Lucking, right? Uh, Piney, he got uh, billing as well at the front. Yeah. Right? Piney, Ryan too. you were up there. Ryan. Ryan was up there now. Dayton. Good, Dayton? Good, Dayton, not yet. Dayton oh, not Kelly, yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay, but not coming yet. Up. Okay, coming up. Okay. So now we start off, Opie was on like some kind of walkabout or I don't know what, we, what's that? Can I, before you, before you start that, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Did, did Gemma get a new hairdo for this season? I think so. Did Katie, she did something cool. I don't know what, I mean, she's always doing shit cool, but yeah. cool I shit. I think she had, and again, I'm not Mr. Hair Salon here. That would be you, but I think mm, But that, that would be me. I think that she had bangs maybe in the first season. Something. Something and different had, in this. She got some white things going on. Yeah. Maybe some, ex- I don't know, but. Something cool. She's, she's, she, it she's was never, super cool. Never looked better. Yeah. Yeah. She good. looked more like bikery. And again, I think, again, ah, this is that moment where things, you know, we're coming back for a second season. Things start changing. People start wearing different rings. People start wearing yeah. different shirts yeah. because you're like, yeah. oh, this, we're going to be doing this for a minute. Yeah. You start to kind of lean in more. The show gets a little more money and things start to change a little. So, yeah. Okay. We went into Opie's gone, right? He's on this journey, I, I guess, sure. after, after Donna was killed, a walkabout or whatever they're calling it. And it made me realize again, which I'm sure we're going to talk about a thousand times. We probably already have is the Jack's OB dynamic. Their chemistry was it's through the roof, right? From the second to none, second to none from the beginning. Yeah. Like right away, they were like these best buddies, best buddies, best buddies, best age. I grew up as kids, everything. Yeah. Yeah. And they really like, it came through even just in watching them, the way they hug, the way they talk to each other. And again, here's what's so crazy. And everybody who listens to this should know this. You can't earn the Opie moment in season five. If you don't have all this stuff before it, which is you building this relationship with him and Jax, you're building all these other relationships, which we'll get into with all the other characters. If you don't create that Opie character and same thing with juice down the road is this sympathetic you care for him so much. That's how you earn what happens later. You, that's why when I always say you got to earn the kill, if you don't yeah. earn the kill, nobody cares. It just goes off and people go, oh, yeah, he's gone. Who cares? Yeah. Yeah. So I thought that watching yeah. those two together, uh, they just have such great chemistry. So um, then you go to Gemma and Tara. This is everybody's getting in. You know, it's the beginning of the season. We're going to show everybody's relationship. It's funny. Gemma says one of her classic Gemma lines in there, which is, uh, I don't want to turn him into a vegan pussy when, when she yeah. offers him soy milk. Um, it's so yeah. classic Gemma. That's like, that's what everybody wore, the what would Gemma do shirts and all that. Because she, she just like was again, like she's just said whatever the, whatever the fuck she wanted, whenever she wanted. Yeah, yeah. Had no filters. She just literally said it. It was fantastic. She's isn't it funny, funny that that's what we all want? Like, isn't it funny when we see characters who have no filters, we kind of admire them because in our lives we have filters all the time. And we're like, you know, you see someone like her who just didn't give a shit about anything. That, why do you think, why do you think like Gemma is one of those iconic forever television characters? She just said it the way it was. Yeah. She felt pain. She couldn't show pain. She hid. She told the truth. She was, a, you know, a matriarch, as we talked about. She's running this club, really, even though Clay runs it. Yeah. Gemma is just, like, always there. And uh, she's on the top of the mountain as far as characters, certainly female characters go. Tougher than nails, funny. funny and, and, I'll, and I'll talk about this later on when we get into other episodes. The greatest thing about Gemma's character was that 
in the beginning, I, I, I'm, I'm curious to see when the turn is of what episode it is. But in the beginning, Gemma really was the heart and soul of Sons of Anarchy, meaning like everybody would go to her. She would be like the, the one who kept it together. And even though her and Clay were like being devious behind, it really was at the protection of Jax. Like they, did, they weren't trying to hurt him. They were just like trying to protect him from JT's, the when JT sure. kind of spun out or whatever you want to call became, it. Became soft or became-, became so, Whatever they say. You know, what, however, yeah. But she was like, that's why I think people, I think the whole weird thing is that people admired her so much because she was, you know, all family, all club, all this, uh, I'll do whatever. And, but somewhere along the line, she did become evil. And I'm curious of, I think I know when it happened, but we'll get to that when we get to that. I think it was, uh, I that's think way, that's way, way down, down. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. okay. So we have that. Um, then Gemma, uh, Gemma and Unser on the bench. I don't know if you wrote about so, that. So, so, so Jim, Jim announced her on the bench. And I, the thing I wrote down about that is like, when can we do scenes like that oh. in filming these days? Like, when can we. No. And then they give it back. And we go, and then you give it like what it, it's, it's, uh, it's painfully obvious and real and a bit sad, nostalgic for you and I to be going and doing this. For all our fans and for everyone who's listening, there's so many people listening and watching now, and we're so fortunate to do this. But my my memories of uh, it's now 2020. I, I've done one movie. You're, you're in one right now. It's a different time. Everyone's wearing masks and whatnot, and we have to. And it's a smart thing to do. We're going to figure this out as we go. But that scene. I mean, how how well does Gemma know Wayne, and how well does Wayne know Gemma? Right? We've We've said that before, Theo. They're they're like two peas in a pot. Yeah, and 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 even the other stuff aside, just the patience of the scene. They're literally sitting Beautiful. there, just sharing a joint. He says miracle drug, you know, he, and it's they're so soulful. Like they're just two very soulful actors, especially on so right. We talk about Piney a lot like this, that there's just so much gravitas in like the way they speak. So when you're just watching a scene of two people talking with air in the middle and you hear the birds in the background, you go, that's real life. Like, that's life. And, wow. and, and yeah, go ahead. No, Sorry. no, no, go, go, go. I was just going to say, and, and I hope everyone realizes, like, Sutter never complicates scenes with fill-in music, fill-in violins, fill-in nothing. Just lets it's them play. Just lets them play. Let's and we know, talk. and we know now, in the, in what we do, and and again, I'm not knocking the current time of entertainment. I'm just saying that it's very fast paced. Like even the camera moves are fast, and the and everybody's running, and we're quick, moving quick, 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 quick. We're playing music, and we're. It's like we have to stimulate these five Oof. second brains we have. Where when I get to watch this, I find myself sometimes just like in on the scene, and I'm like, oh, I'm in. Well, is, that. isn't that isn't that the truth? And you know this as a filmmaker. I certainly know this as a filmmaker. You can't make up pace. Mm. The pacing of the edit, the pacing of the scenes, the positioning of the scenes are so key. And, and trust me when I say this, that there were certain scenes that in this seven-year process of 92 shows, Kurt would move, mm. would save would push here instead of there because of the pacing. And I can't tell you, this, this show, Theo, I know you and I have talked about this behind the scenes. I can't believe how much happens in 48 minutes. I, uh, I'm blown I, away. I, 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 right? I don't, I we, and, and, and that's for some episodes that we've already done and all that. I'm like, I, I look down sometimes because I'm watching it, you know, up here in Canada on Netflix. And I look down and I go, how, how is there 23 minutes left? And I just... There was 75 storylines that just happened. And he ties them all together. Riveting. They're ties them all together. Using, they're not, you know, whatever. Um, so really just, uh, again, here we are. We've just seen Gemma. It, it's like literally the first 10 minutes of the show. And we've seen her do all these different things. So now we go to the Darby. Rollins goes to see Darby. I, I, I can't. I, I, I'll, no, I want you to go. No, go. But I, go. I, just, I, I just have to go. Henry Rollins is chilling. Chilling. I you want to talk about like that incredible compliment you gave Booney, which is so so true. Rollins does the same thing with his character 
in a monotone this, not that Boone's ever monotone. He's not, he's got a lot going on. It's fucking fascinating. I, I, I want to, I want to fucking work with Booney and on everything, mm-hmm. but this guy, Henry Rollins to know as a human being, like I know you Theo really well, you know, me really well. Some mm-hmm. of the characters we play are on the darker side of life. Yeah. Right. And, and they're fascinating to play and get into Rollins. Not only did he jump into this guy, but I believe everything he said and how the way his looks were to Darby. Could you believe what he said at the end of that scene to him? You didn't earn that. To, to, to Mitch, yeah. you know, like he's going, no, I'll, I'll open it up. He goes, no, no, cover it up because you're not earning. Yeah. You're not earning that at all. It's chilling. It's chilling. That, and, and again, he's not doing it in a way of like, it's just what he truly believes as the character. So you're never questioning for a second that that's Henry Rollins, even if you know him. You're looking at this guy, and what is the job of an actor is to trick the audience into making you believe that he's that person on screen. 100%. So here, here it is. You have this guy who I, I know it's not just me. A lot of people knew who he was, but not for a second do we not think that that's Weston, you know, uh, Weston, his the lieutenant for this Zobel guy. So, you know, Hats off to him. Um, Opie lost the match. Can, of- can, can, can I ask you? Sorry. Yeah, no, um, yeah. do, do you know, like, because you, you know Kurt really well and, and stuff, and I know him well, but how did Henry, did Henry reach out? Did we Kurt reach out to him? Kurt was a huge fan of his. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't, and again, I don't know how they met. I don't know whatever. You know, I know as okay. the season started Beautiful. going on, then everybody started calling Kurt. I don't know. Maybe Rollins watched the first season, but I do know that. Um, I know that happened with everybody else, Manson and, you know, Courtney Love and everything that happened later. But um, I don't know. Cool. That's a really good. I, but Rollins we'll, had been we'll acting. We'll find that He's out. Heat. Rollins is heat with De Niro. He's been yeah. acting a bunch uh, prior to that. So um, who knows? Maybe it was a, maybe it was a, a Wendy O'Brien thing. You don't know. Okay. So you're talking about Opie. Opie lost Opie. a bunch of weight. Lost a bunch of weight. Okay. So... <clears throat> That scene that we're going to talk about now when Opie parks his bike, he's going to come, he's going to see us for the first time since the death of... Tons Don. of hugs. A lot of hugs. Okay. Okay. Now, um, I think it was, I think it was my boy. Yeah, it was Guy. Guy Furland directed this episode. Oh, he did? Yeah, Guy oh, did. Cool. And I, I remember, I remember on that day when we were going to film, Opie's coming back to the club. First time... I've seen him, Clay seen him from what we did, oh, all that, yeah. right? So there's a lot, of, lot, lot, lot of history. So I said to Guy, and people, I, I think our fans will know this, and if they don't, they they will now. When you exited the clubhouse, there was always an uh, an order: president, VP, uh, sergeant at arms, treasurer. Like there was a bit of an order uh, how you came out, and I was always behind Clay. I was always behind Clay. If it wasn't Jax, it was Tig. It was just, I was always right. And I remember that day going up to Billy uh, and saying, and not Billy, going up to Guy Hi. and saying, saying to Guy, our director, I, I want to come out last. I want, I want to come out last. And Guy went beautiful. And he, the way he filmed it was on Opie. Charlie's behind. Here's Opie's coming to see us. Clay, all us guys were, cut, and I was last. And if you look at the faces in there and uh, the hidden feelings, certainly of, of, of Tig, it was palpable. You could feel it because of the way Billy filmed it, and I was the last guy out. And then, as you just said, the hugs come and the hugs come. And there was a little bit of a cutaway at the end where Tig is really rubbing his shoulder and, 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 yeah. and just masking everything. Because that's what we do as one percenters so well is you mask shit. And that's the rumblings of, you know, this 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 stuff that we start to see in TIG. And, and next week, which we didn't even talk about next week, we're going to be doing, in my mind, uh, you have you have a lot of great episodes, but. Uh, uh, oh, we're I, doing. I, uh... Yeah, we're, we're, I know. I remember it. I, again, I can't wait to watch it because I do know that we're doing service, which is. Oh, a big yeah, one, we are. A big one. OK, so before. So. That to me, when he came back, lots of hugs. He's back, oh. right? Um, Clay is now running the table, doing the club talk. Piney's holding it all in, knowing right? that they tried to kill right? his son. Yeah. I, I, and I just wrote down, oh, boy. 
you want to talk about good editing in a church scene, the pops of all of us, Theo, mm -hmm. the pops to, from Charlie to me, you to, 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 to Tommy, all of just the, the pops were, were crazy. Guy, Guy is a great director. And, um, and it's funny, you know what it made me remember in that scene? Cause I didn't remember it. At, well, I mean, I don't remember anything, but did, did Piney always drank tequila? He always had the, uh, I forgot that. Forgot totally it. forgot that, right? He always had the Patron, uh, uh, whatever it was. Little, little bottle. Uh, you got a fly bottle. in there, buddy. You, you know, got a fly attacking I, I got, there. I got a couple of flies. They're, they're coming at me. I wonder what it is. Come, and I smell really good, too. So Probably I don't know you're what wearing, the, You're wearing a lot of that musk. I'm wearing my thing. I'm the doing musk. my thing. You got your lavender right? on. You smell the whole room. Smells I don't know lavender. what it is, but it smells pretty fucking good Something. to me. But there, so there. if I get up and you hear this, it means I got my fly swatter on. I swear to God, you motherfuckers, get out of here. Beat it. <laughs> You know, those are the only two insects that I will, uh, there's only two insects that I will kill because you know, I don't do that. And I don't even like saying that word, but um, the two that I will take out are flies and mosquitoes. And mosquitoes. So that's it. Those are yeah, the only they're never two. good. I save spiders. I'll save caterpillars. I'll save whatever. Yeah. Want, but if yeah. those two come in the realm, you're, it's, it's on. We're cocky going. Roach? What about a cocky roach? No, I won't. I love them. I take them out. Leave them. Let them crawl around. Yeah, I respect cockroaches because they are, I mean, you have to have respect for these guys. They literally can live through anything. I don't know how they do it. Millions and millions and millions Speaking, of years. Do you, know, I, do, do you want to know what's funny? I was just telling this story the other day. It's going to come up in season something. I had a, a cockroach. What do you mean? seen with me. Did you? Yeah, when I was in the jail cell, the cockroach was on my arms and went, so they, I had a wrangler, they had a cockroach wrangler. So we'll get to that when we go. So point is when that happened, that I, is so I, worked, great. I worked with a real cockroach and I had such, he was so great. He was one of the best did actors he, I ever worked with. He, he was great. Paid more, more than scale? Paid I more mean, than anybody. He was probably, ah, I mean, he's bigger trailer, bigger. His own trailer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love but that. I, so I had a lot of respect for them after that. So big fan of the cockroaches. Um, okay. <laughs> So Clay's doing his table. Piney's holding everything back. Jax confronts Clay. It's a great yeah, sure little did. short scene. Sure did. Confirming man. that he truly knows what happened. That he knows. He might not say it, but he knows. Oh, no. He, he says it without saying it. You and your trigger boy out there who's having, your trigger boy's having a beer with Opie. Like, like he says it right in that fucking scene, man. He lays the gauntlet right on the table. And that's when, and did you see, did you see Clay's reaction to that? Like, hey, you watch what you say. Yeah. You watch what, and then he goes, well, you're going to kill me too? Like, he doesn't give up, but it's subtle. It's yeah. all, like, who doesn't want to love this show? They were really, and that's when they were, that's the fever pitch. Like, they were, that was starting, like, it got to whatever it was, oh. episode 10, episode whatever, where this was a season and a half of, you know, almost two seasons of, just let's go animosity then, animosity 20. so here you guys go on this mission to go take out this the mayan guy right on the motorcycle yeah, yeah. and 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 may i just <laughs> tell me I just all say, about it because i was not I'm, there I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you all about it but i gotta say this is one of the i mean i can't wait to get back to season one now i'm having so much fun going from one two and three like this was your idea kid mm. but i got i gotta tell you do the Mayans have a cool look or, or am I the best? Am best I out bikes, of my mind? Best everything. I mean, the ape bars, apes, and the way yeah. they ride those Amazing. apes are everywhere and the way they look. And even there, the back of their cut is different with the greens and the reds. Beautiful. I mean, just beautiful. Well, okay. So that day, I mean, great little actor too. I forget his name, but we were going to go, you know, get the guy who was responsible for Donna's death. All right. Now, it, again, as an audience member, you're all watching this going, okay, so Tig's driving, Chibs is beside, Charlie's going with fucking Ryan. Here we go. How's this going to go down? Who of was it again? Got, Who was there again? It was you, Opie. It, it was Opie, Jax in one truck, and it was Tommy, Chibs, and Tig in the other. It was four of us. And, of course, there's, there's rock music. The rock music's just blasting away. And we shot that thing in a whole day, man. We took the whole day to shoot that. There was a lot of action. We threw that, that, that sort of that piece of steel through the, the, the rim of his bike. And that was wipes amazing. Out. We pull him aside, um, you know, and I, I, I've got this down. I go, you know, it was so 
it was so rough watching the looks of all our faces. Opie's gone. He's gone. gone. He wants to hear him say it. He's not going to put a plug in him until he hears him say it. You've got these subtle, I'm sure you noticed this, Theo, but there are looks between Jax and Tig in that scene. When Opie's turning around to walk away, Charlie wants to calm him down. Jax looks back at Tig to say, you fucking handle this. Mm. You, you. I didn't even notice that. I did. I did notice it. And of course, I don't know of what was just said in the clubhouse between Clay and Jax. I don't know any of that stuff. All I know is I'm dealing with my own remorse of the Donna thing. Mm-hmm. But I but I see a look in. I'm not. I'm, Tig is not stupid. None of these guys are stupid. We all know there's shit going down right now in the club, and it's not fun to be to to be involved in. And 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 so that scene where I um, shoot him in the mouth. Where I shoot him in the mouth. You know, uh, it, it was it was a really well thought out plan. I thought by Tig and. I, I, I took it from, from Jax's eyes telling me to do something about this. And uh, yeah, it was, it was. It but was, if you take it from Jax's eyes and again, just going from a fan perspective here, then you would assume that maybe Jax knew, or do you think that he was just doing it to, to. This to is make- all I know. This is all I know is that Opie has stated in front of me. I want to hear him say it. I want to hear him say it. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. And then he's fucking dead. I get to shoot him. I want to hear him say it. I don't know really what that look is to Tig. All mm-hmm. I do know is that look is saying something to me. Get it done. And, and just get it done. Because whether I think Jax knows that I did it or whether I don't think, all I knew is the VP of the club is going, get it done. Do something. Do something. Yeah, and, and you had to cut the cuffs. You had to, you know, shoot him. You know, you have to shoot him, and you don't kill him. You're just shooting him like in the face, which was brutal, by the way, because his jaws lopped off. And then he comes in, and Opie oh. does the thing. And um, you know, uh, what was so great about that scene is, uh, basically, Jax lies to Opie's face, right there, right, right there, lies to his face. This is the guy. No, no questions. There's no brother. question. No questions. Then Jax realizes that he's got to fix this because he carved anarchy in, which, by the way, made my stomach turn a little, which I'm really good with usually, is uh, I don't know what it was about the sound or whatever, whoever the Foley artist was on that. Uh, he I, don't think we had, I don't think we had anyone that was better in the whole than, than Sons of Anarchy guys and girls that worked on this show. The music, the Foley. The, the, Foley, the and just so everybody knows, it. Foley is when in films and television, Foley is like they add in sounds for things that happen, right? Obviously, Opie didn't really carve someone's stomach, but you have to make the sound of what it would sound like if someone was car- carving someone's stomach with an anarchy symbol. And Foley artists go in there and they'll they create them in they'll, who they'll, knows they'll, what kind of way. They'll they'll take a watermelon. They'll they'll, yeah. they'll take a a pear. They'll like horses when horses run away. Yeah. There, there's actual, you know, little clocks. What they do they, for they, their net. Yeah. They, and, and again, incredible. Foley art, they'll use pans and pots for things. Correct. So they're incredible. And there's usually like seven of them or five of them together. And uh, it's just a really cool job. Somebody should do a documentary on Foley artists. That's a. Uh, no, no, you know, we don't know who they are. We, they, no, we don't they know they who never, they are. It's pretty amazing. They, they make billions of dollars. We don't know who they are. So <laughs> but whatever that sound was, I was, uh, I got sick to my stomach. So he carves the A and now Jax has to shoot him in the, in the stomach. Uh, and he gets a phone call we get a jesus christ there he's like jesus christ right jesus now. jesus christ answers the phone it's tara okay uh now you have clay and Gemma in the bedroom ron's got his pants down nobody wants to see any of this um half sack walks in. Gemma certainly didn't no I mean, katie certainly didn't no Did, let's go love you honey but let's get this done but another great line uh uh get sparky get join in or uh or get out right and he great line great sparky, sparky. i mean come on what a great i wanted that sparky i mean who doesn't want a nickname called sparky amazing and he tells get in or get out so now we go to the party scene okay uh tells clay it's all good right everything's handled okay but hang on a second hang yeah. on a second did i jump no not at all but can we talk about these fraternities can we amazing. talk about 
look at that scene that's happening outside. The day is over. You've you've got you've got Jax carving the A on the phone, telling his Tara she, he loves her. Like mm. the, there's different worlds just flying around of violence and love and and redemption and all. And Opie's kind of bad. What, uh, and then we go to Friday and we, we come to 150 extras. Yeah. Lots of fake beer, lots of smoking, yeah. lots of partying going down. And I have to say this, Theo, that, oh boy, I can't wait to talk about this down the line. But this show, which, uh, which is why we're talking about it, has its own, it's, it's an epic television show in the world, right? Mm -hmm. Those first few seasons, had some humor, had some fun, had some, this is one of those nights you think it's going to be an incredible like party. And it was, but all those extras, did we just get less and less of that as the years went on? I so, so when we, when we keep mentioning Friday days and this is for the new people, it means that you would film on a Friday night. And as the weeks get longer, what happens is your, your call times, which means your days you start work. So on Monday, you might start work at 7 a.m., but then the way the hours are, it gets more and more and more. So by the time it comes to Friday, you're usually going to do all your night stuff that night, all your night scenes and the bigger scenes with more people. Yeah. And usually you're going to start working about 5, 6 p.m. So we're probably filming those, we call them Friday days. You're probably filming those scenes about 3 in the morning, 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning. And... It's every for seven years, eight years, whatever it is, we did that. Fratter days were when we did those big scenes. That was probably one of the biggest we've ever done ever because it was this giant scene. Like all the, you know, all those characters that I remember from when we were young were all there. I saw them all in the background. So everybody there. Bobby's, right. Bobby's coming home. Coming and home. It's a real party inside and out. Like we did the party in the club, outside of the club, like in the garage. There were just people everywhere. We were everywhere. everywhere. And, you know, you were either on camera for a minute, you weren't, you would, but people were everywhere. And, you know, you, you come up, you know, you've been drinking, you come up and, you know, Bobby's out now. Bobby comes home. And I thought that was such an amazing reaction. And I remember it, you know what? I really do remember it like it was yesterday. It was our first episode back after six months. We knew now that we were on a show that was successful. We were as happy as those characters were in that 100%. moment. 100%. Well, 100%. And, and even, even Stahl, even Ellie Walker. If you, if, if, you, if you look at her oh. when she gets out of that car, she was like a 1940s movie star. Yeah. She flung her hair. Yeah. She flung her hair getting out of that car. Allie knew, I think I'm going to stay in this chick's skin for a while. I think I'm going to see your face more, Ron Perlman. Right. I'm, I'm here for a while. There was a celebratory, as you just said, feeling that was unprecedented. We felt so good that night. Everyone felt so good. It's all going to be good. And that's why her levity was allowed in that scene, because we had such a long history. And she knew it, not just as Allie but as Saul that we were going to be here for a while like that yeah. to me, that party symbolized, Hey, by the way, if you like this show, we're going to be around for a little while. Yeah, like it was so one great. of those. So we're all right. like hugging and happy and clay was banging on that roof and going, I'd like to see you on the pole or whatever, see what you can do. And she goes, you have no idea. And, and all this is happening. Right. And it's, I was smiling ear to ear, literally you come up drunk to clay. It's all over with it's handled. And you think, wow, these guys, the, the, the best is in front of them. The worst is behind them. And yeah. this is, again, I, I don't want to keep, how brilliant, right? How, how brilliant. Um, and then all of a sudden, these guys pull up. Okay, who are these guys? What's going on here? We met this guy briefly in the beginning. Who is he? They get out. Oh, now they get out with some of Darby's guys. I truly believe in this moment we got to see who everybody was little things, right? We're all standing in our places. Happy looks like he's about to eat somebody. He's literally. I forgot that him. he was a, I forgot he was a nomad. I forgot uh -huh. that he was a nomad. I forgot that I, he became such a huge part of the club. DL so brilliant in the show five, six, yeah. season seven, all that. But early he was a nomad finding his way. And, and DL was always there, man. The way Tig takes his gun out 
right away. It start, we start to show who everyone is. And Ron is the guy in front. He's the cock of the walk. Like, let's go. We're having an amazing time. And here come these guys. So now you're smiling ear to ear like I was. And then it's, wait a second, who are these? Oh, but by the way, we're just getting started on this descent into what's about to happen. So these guys come and they are obviously show no fear. They are, you know, now these guys, it's going to be trouble. And guess what? The episode could have ended there and you would go, oh, okay. These guys are going to be trouble for the sons. Like these, these white separatists or white supremacists, whatever you want to, whatever they call themselves, this league of whatever, they're going to be a problem. And Clay hands me that card and says, go find out everything about them, right? Like this is it. We're, here's our enemy. We just introduced you. Yeah, to he handed that he handed that card to you as he always did. You know, you you were the you were the go-to computer guy. Yeah. And and, he, and go ahead. Sorry, and before we continue, I just have to tell the audience out there that there was something happened that night that uh was was really inexcusable on my behalf. And uh it was so innocent in, in its in its beginnings, but when 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 Zobel and Weston and his goons all pulled up, got out of the car. Tig does pull his gun, but he doesn't point his gun. And I did a take where I actually pointed it right at Arkin, like right, mm. right at him. And the, we were filming, we're filming, then I didn't do it. The next day, I was told that Adam was very upset because, and he respected me so much as an actor, and we just met each other for the first time. Um, that I had not shown, we didn't show the gun to make sure there was nothing in the show gun. The gun. You, all, always, right? Explain that to people. Okay, I'm going to explain people to, to people that whenever whenever you do a scene with uh, with a gun, you they're real hunt. guns. They're real guns. They're real guns, and they're blanks. They're real bullets, but they're blanks. Obviously, you never ever ever take a chance at all. You always show the person that you're acting with, that you're pointing the gun at, that there's nothing in the chamber. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. They pull the trigger a couple of times to show you nothing, 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 nothing. That would have been done and should have been done before I was ever pointing anything at another actor. Well, I just lost myself in the moment, lost myself in my feeling for this guy, and I lifted it up. Mm -hmm. That should never have happened. So the next day, I saw Adam on set. I apologized profusely. I told him it would never happen again. He said, no problem, no problem. I just, you know. And so anyway, that's filmmaking. And you should never, ever uh, make mistakes like that. But but I did. And uh, it was all cool. Anyway, that yeah. scene was. And it's funny, you know, early in my career, like a Wrangler or somebody would, or, you know, the first AD or, you know, which is the first assistant director or somebody would, would like, hey, you want to see the gun, you know, and, and me being all, yeah. you know, filled with piss and vinegar, I'd be like, it's fine, it's fine. Right. Now, like, like on this film I'm on now, you know, there's, there's a gun on set, you know, a bunch of guns every day. And like, I'm literally like, good for you. let me see it. Let me see yeah, it. Good and I'm for like you. checking yeah. that, checking the yeah, chamber because you. again, you, you, human error, right? You just don't know because if a blank comes out, you know, everybody knows the stories of Brandon Lee and other actors, you know, this is the crow. Yeah. It could be, it could, yeah. things couldn't get bad with blanks. People think blanks just explode in the gun. No, something comes out because we've all, and we'll go into those stories down the road. We've all taken hot, you know, uh, uh, bullet casings that go down your shirt or, you know, hit you in the face. I've been burned in the face with someone shooting next to me. So, that's amazing. I, I didn't even, it's funny. I didn't, of course, I didn't remember that. I mean, I don't remember what I ate 10 minutes ago, but I, I didn't remember that, but that's, that's an amazing story. So here it we an are. Amazing, it was an amazing night. So here we are. Keep going. We could end, we can end the episode. We can oh, end but it. We don't. Oh, any, but we don't. any other show end the episode it's over. Here's the, these guys are a problem. This is going to be, let's, let's start season two. Oh no. Oh no. Tara relieves Gemma and she's coming back. And somebody's beeping like crazy behind her. My baby, my baby's choking. Gemma gets out of the car, goes to help what yeah. anyone would do. The second she sees that that's a doll, before she could even think about it, which, by the way. Couldn't even take a breath. She makes your asshole tighten up when you see that's Ooh. a doll. You are like, holy fuck, this is bad. Yeah. She sees that it's a doll. She gets clocked. Okay, what's going on? Now as an audience, our minds on the party, we've now, our emotions have literally gone like this. 
typical Sons of Anarchy fashion. Your fucking heart rate is up. It's down. It's up. It's down. It's up. We're smiling. Now what? Now I'm going. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you come down the hill with this, but I have to remind all our beautiful peeps that we are in a theater at the premiere watching this whole 58 minutes and it's coming down to this. We've seen nothing. We heard how it went. Then that gets, she gets clocked. And from the clocking, don't we go back to the club, Theo? Don't we see yeah. Op- Opie with his kids? And, yep. and you know, I'm going, to, I'm, I'm going to Perlman. and it's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. We'll, we'll get through this. You're, the look on your face. There was just all these montages of, of stuff, right? And then. And then we just see her hanging there. Now we've noticed something's wrong. So as an audience member, which I just was, something's wrong. And then just barely out of focus in the background, you see these people in the most frightening mass I've ever seen in my life coming in. Frightening. And there's a multiple ones of them. There's not one, there's multiple. And now you're going, what the fuck is happening? She's been beat up. She has like her, but not bad. She hasn't, she really hasn't taken it. They just chained her up and did whatever to put her up there. And then uh, for my money, um, I think it's probably one of the more disturbing scenes. I know I've had a few um, later on too, but, um, and I'm going to tell you why I say all the time as an actor, you could fake it to a lot of people, but the eyes never lie. Gemma's eyes on that scene, because that's really where they put the focus for a while. Uh, I, I think it's probably some of the best things, the best thing I've ever seen on screen. One of the best things I've ever seen. Uh, and, and probably one of the most brutal. Maybe it was because I was so happy. And then, you know, when Clay and all those guys and the hugging of Bobby and he's home and the party and that. And uh, you could hear a fucking pin drop in that theater when that scene went. We, we jumped up. Uh, everyone was crying. We, 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 the lights came up and applause and, and we, you know, as, as good coworkers and brothers and sisters should do. And we were lucky enough to have that in our cast for seven years. We all just looked at Katie and, and just, Unbelievable. you know, and, and it was, you know, you, you had a moment like that more than one. I've had more than one at mm-hmm. the end of the premiere where we, Charlie's had, we've all, but that was that was her. That was her. Uh, Katie's never had to do anything like that mm-hmm. in acting before, and she fought. Gemma fought. If you remember, she kicked them mm-hmm. and she screamed at them. Don't you spit, know who I spit, am? Kick, do you know what I can do to you? Kicking, spitting, like e- even when when Sarah Jones, a beautiful Sarah, mm-hmm. came up and clocks her, a fake baby. She reached for her gun first, Katie did. And then she, it's a woman, she's in trouble. She doesn't need her gun. Like that, that biker thing in Gemma. And then you realize that she had to go, I, I suppose, to such a dark, dark release point after you beat up and, and, and what happened to her in that end, end moment. Um, it, it, was, it was really brilliant. Uh, and Sutter again, hits it out of the park for you think you should be happy then it's just crazy it's crazy yeah and again the only reason and and why i watched it with such intent what people don't realize is what what went down with juice later on which we'll get to you know who knows when that will be is (sighs) one of the things that's really uh interesting to do and you've done this many times in acting and again this happens when you're playing extreme characters or you know just someone that something's happened to is to make your eyes lifeless yeah her eyes were lifeless. Like, like it's all gone. I, you just took this from me, but I'm still alive, but you've taken my life. And that emptiness, that hollowness that you need to show as an actor, it re- you really have to go to some, you got to go to some deep waters, right? You got to get, you got to get into the deep waters with that. And it's, it's a, it's a really interesting concept that maybe when I'm older and, and, and you're older, we'll do, you know, we'll do some acting classes in, uh, in, in the Maldives um, is uh, <laughs> the Atlas mountains of Morocco. I'll go yeah, wherever you we'll want to go. Morocco. We'll do, but it is like to get to that, you have to let yourself go to the edge, the edge. Cause it is at the edge. 
And um, I just can't, I can't give her enough credit on that. I just, it was, it was heartbreaking. And, um, and at the same time, I also give her so much acknowledgement because that scene made our show, which made so many things for me. I mean, I, you know, not just, you know, financially and, and career wise and all that. I mean, you know, I've said this a million times. I, I, I met my wife because of Sons of Anarchy. I have my kids because of Sons of Anarchy. Like it's like, and that scene in that moment is what boosted us into another trajectory of television. So it's uh, cause you know what? It, it, somebody could have played that different. Oh my God. Yeah. And isn't it fun to be able to go back? We've talked about a couple of season two shows already <laughs> about the Katie trying to save the club by telling Jackson Ron about that day that we just talked about now. I mean, to go back and revisit the beginnings of something we've already kind of talked about it's fascinating to do. I'm is this the season this she won the Emmy for? Correct, the Golden Globe. Golden the Golden Globe. Globe. Okay, yeah. she won the Golden. And 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 she should have. I mean, there's not even just that scene alone. Um, amazing. So uh, that's it, buddy. We're uh, next up. Whoa. We just said that's it. Season no two. No way. Yeah, that was the premiere. That was the premiere. I feel of season like two. Like a by la we did yeah. it. We did it. Another one. Albification. Another one bites the dust, and another one down, and another one down. And okay, I, I, I hope the guys in the comments, uh, you know, you know what, you know what to do. We're, we're, we're both wearing green. You. This I was unintentional. You. Next It'll time, never happen again. Maybe it will. Maybe we'll both be wearing week. black shirts. I'll see you in a week. See you in love a week. you. Goodbye. Love you.